Next up in our study of sequences and series is a specific look at arithmetic sequences. Now in arithmetic sequences, a sequence of numbers where there exists a set quantity between consecutive terms, meaning that in order to get from one term to the next, we're always adding the same amount. And it is the fact that we're always adding if the terms are decreasing in nature, then it's simply a fact that we're adding a negative number. Now the common difference is the set amount of change between consecutive terms of an arithmetic sequence. When writing an explicit form or a recursive form for an arithmetic sequence, when we talk about the common difference, we always use the variable d to denote this amount. So arithmetic sequence, arithmetic, we're always adding the same amount. Common difference is that amount that we are adding. Some arithmetic sequences. Are each of these, or is each of these, a, an arithmetic sequence? If so, what is that common difference? So in order to find this out, we simply look to see how do we move from one term to the next. To move from 2 to 4, I add 2. From 4 to 8, I add 4. From 8 to 16, I add 8. So is this an arithmetic sequence? The answer is no, because there's not a set difference from one term to the next. Next, from 1 to 5, I add 4. 5 to 9, I'm adding 4. 9 to 13, I add 4, and from 13 to 17, I add 4. So is this an arithmetic sequence? Yes. And what's the common difference? D equals 4. Next, identify, uh, is this one? 1, negative 3, 5, negative 7 arithmetic. To move from 1 to 3, I subtract 4. From 1 to negative 3, I subtract 4. From negative 3 to positive 5, I add 8. From positive 5 to negative 7, I'm going to subtract 12. So is this one an arithmetic sequence? And again, the answer is no, because we're not adding the same amount. Now, if these were all positive or all negative, yes, we would have an arithmetic sequence, and that common difference would be either a 2 or negative 2, respectively. But because we're alternating positive and negative, we do not get that benefit. Let's analyze some arithmetic sequences. What would be the 57th term of the sequence that begins 7, 11, 15, 19? Let's look first to see, is this arithmetic? Well, to move from 7 to 11, we add 4. 11 to 15 is add 4. 15 to 19, we add 4. So we're going to use this to write a recursive formula, or sorry, an explicit formula. An explicit formula is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. So, and this should be a sub 1 right here. So a sub n equals a sub 1, which is 7, plus our common difference, which is 4, times n minus 1. And the reason we go n minus 1 is in order to get the first term, we'd substitute in a 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. That difference times 0 is 0, and it gives us back to our original first term. So to find a sub 57, the 57th term, we're going 7 plus 4 times 57 minus 1. 57 minus 1, 56. 56 times 4 is 224 plus 7. We get the 57th term at 231. So a sub 57 is 231. Next, what are the missing terms of the sequence 5, two missing terms, and then 78? 
Well, these two missing terms represent the fact that we are adding the same difference three times. So in order to find D, we're going to take 78 and subtract 15, then divide it by how many changes that took, which is 3. So 78 minus 15 is 63. 63 divided by 3 is 21. So in order to move from one term to the next, we're adding 21. So as a recursive formula, a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 21. So how do we move from 15, or what happens if we add 21 to 15? We get 36. If we add another 21 to that, we will get 57. Add 21 to that, we get 78. So the two missing terms were 36 and 57. Now, how can we take an arithmetic sequence and either an explicit or recursive formula and use it to apply to real life? My high school had a performance theater in it, and this is kind of based on that. A small community theater has three sections of seating for performances. You'd have a center, stage right, and stage left, with aisleways in between. The center section has 27 seats in the first row, with each new row adding an extra seat on each end. So it fans out as you move up. We have 27 seats in this row, an extra one on the left, extra one on the right, and it will slowly build up, making a trapezoidal center section with a set of rows on the right and a set of rows on the left. So how many seats are there in the 18th row of the center section? Well we have 27 here and it goes to 29 then 31 and what would be the pattern? Well as a recursive a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 2, or n sub, uh, sorry, not n sub 1. A sub 1 is 27. As a recursive, as a, an explicit formula, a sub n is going to equal our first term, 27, plus that common difference of 2 times n minus 1. So now, in order to find the 18th, we cannot use either formula. The easier method here is going to be to use the explicit formula. So we're going to go with a sub 18 equals 27 plus 2 times 18 minus 1. Now running through our simplification process here, we come out that a sub 18, the 18th row of this theater, has a total of 61 seats. Now, a note here, it looks a lot, when we're writing an explicit form of an arithmetic sequence, that this is simply a linear function. We have a slope, we have a set difference, a uh, which is that slope, and we have a starting value, which would be similar to the y-intercept. The difference between a sequence of numbers and a function is that the sequence is a discrete set of numbers. Discrete meaning that it's only these points. With a function, we would have all values in between. So we could have uh, n be 12.3. But with a sequence of numbers, it is only integer values that we are allowed to substitute in for n. There's your main difference. If we were to graph a sequence of numbers, it would be a series of points along an n, a sub n set of axes, rather than a line connecting those points. Also, when we're dealing with these, there really aren't any 
negative values for n. We can't have the negative fourth term of the sequence. Although some may argue where did this information come from before, but for practical purposes of what we're using, we're simply looking at positive n values. So arithmetic sequences is where we're beginning our study here, now that we have the basics down, and we're going to move forward from here into geometric sequences next, and changing these sequences into series will round out our study.